Alrighty, so I decided that um, it'd be a good idea to put together a quick video in relation to sandblasting versus the dry ice cleaning. Uh, generally when it comes to looking at uh, abrasive cleaning, sandblasting is the most popular. Most of the time when people are asking me, oh what's it like, I kind of bounce off sandblasting because the concept is familiar to a lot of people. So I'd say, hey yeah, it's kind of like sandblasting but we do it with dry ice. Uh, which fundamentally is essentially how it works. Uh, so I've got a really good worked example. Um, this is the now snapped camshaft out of a BMW E28 525e. Essentially I wanted to highlight uh, the differences between the two using uh, uh, this particular cam, because it is in two pieces, it makes it easy to work both of the surfaces separately. Didn't go into a uh, great deal of uh, detail in the way of cleaning them. It was kind of just a quick brush through um, in order to uh, see where they were at and just to get enough uh, for you guys to see what the, what the clear differences between the two are. But obviously having both ends, I'm able to break down the differences between the two uh, and, and what differentiates the two uh, types of cleaning methods. Now with the dry ice cleaning, uh, it, it's, it's obviously best matched for things that are a little bit more fragile. This camshaft is a perfect example because it has no abrasive properties on, on the substrate that you're cleaning or the surface that you're cleaning. So then what you end up getting is removal of any of the contaminants that are on the top layer of, of the substrate you're cleaning um, without actually having any pitting or any damage, which is super clear to see uh, on this particular camshaft. Camshafts do have you know, surfaces that, that need to be polished or, or at least need to be um, as non-porous as possible in order to reduce the drag and friction. With camshafts in particular, uh, you know, there's sensitive places throughout them, such as the journals um, and the lobe. Um, so because this uh, camshaft has been sent to the heavens, we were able to uh, blast away with, with no mercy. What I'll do is I'll, I'll highlight where, you know, particular areas. I've got some uh, B-roll shots that you guys can see. So if we focus on the journal of the sandblasted camshaft end, what you can actually see is that surface looks quite porous. It actually looks a bit sparkly, but that's because of the uh, pitting that's happened on the surface of that camshaft. The steel that the camshaft is made from uh, kind of has that finish either way. So once you sandblast that surface, you get that sort of crystally reflective metallic finish. Now that is an entirely porous finish, um, so that would have a huge amount of drag um, on the rockers, which wouldn't be efficient. Uh, so if you're, you know, refinishing a surface that will have, uh, you know, any form of um, drag, uh, be it a camshaft or be it a bearing or bearing race or anything to that effect, sandblasting isn't going to be effective because what it's going to do is it's going to increase friction on those surfaces um, and then you'll lose efficiency. When it comes to the dry ice blasted journal, it only shows obviously the wear and the pitting that was there in the first place. Dry ice cleaning will always bring back that surface to its original state. Uh, it's not going to improve its original state, it's not going to change the surface uh, texture in any way, shape or form. So if you look at the camshaft end that has been dry ice cleaned, um, you know, you can see a significant difference in texture on that surface. So it looks far more natural. Uh, dry ice cleaning lends itself to finishing to a more natural finish or a, you know, as intended finish. So from the factory, obviously this, uh, you know, this camshaft would have looked very similar to this, uh, you know, with a couple of years of oil saturation that go beyond the surface of, of that camshaft. Uh, you know, the cam might have been a little bit lighter, um, but otherwise it would have looked very similar to the dry ice finish. That doesn't necessarily mean that the, the dry ice cleaning method is the be all and end all. So for example, um, you know, looking at the sandblast said camshaft you can like I've mentioned before the surface is quite porous or etched if you will now etching lends itself really well to preparing surfaces for paint so the reason that we have a sandblasting cabinet here at RSR is because whenever we get to a point where you know something is too far gone damage to that substrate is beyond that initial layer that the dry ice cleaning can get to we use the sandblasting to prepare it to be refinished so there's been a couple of things that we've put up on our Instagram story things that we've uh, you know restored in that method um, because sometimes what happens is you'll be able to dry ice you know 95% of, of an area say a slightly older car that's uh, dealing with rust there might be brackets and things that are too far gone uh, in order to return back to the original state so when you have you know 95% of that area really really super tidy and clean and, and as intended what you get is you'll have you know a, a bracket that's rusted out that really sticks out like a sore thumb so in that instance you know we'll, we'll take that off and, and we'll rework that to make it look um, you know as factory as possible try and restore it to its original finish we focus 
focus primarily here on on having you know a, as minimal impact to the original condition of whatever we're cleaning. So if we can clean something and get it back to that factory finish without refinishing anything, you know that'd be that'd be the ideal outcome. Now, that isn't always the case, and that's when sandblasting uh, comes into its own. So sandblasting can etch a surface, which allows you to prime a little bit better and and, and prepare the surface for paint. Uh, that way, you don't necessarily have to have you know different um, levels of of abrasion um, through sanding. So you might you know unintentionally we're all human, so unintentionally we might apply more pressure at a certain point when we're preparing something for paint. Whereas sandblasting kind of gives you a nice unison finish, as long as your movements within that refinishing method are consistent, then you're going to get a nice etched finish. Outside of that, if we look at the, you know, the two lobes, despite the fact that the lobe on the sandblasted <laughs> camshaft is, is quite damaged pretty significantly, hence why this camshaft was replaced, you can see this quite a bit taken out of the end of it. But regardless, if you look at the finishes between the two camshaft lobes, you can see that with the dry ice planed lobe that's in the back, you can see that there's no pitting on that surface, as you can see on the sandblasted surface where that would be quite porous and, and produce quite a bit of friction on the, on the rocker of this particular camshaft setup. With the dry ice cleaning, it's, you know, it's retained its original polished state. It, the, the dry ice cleaning will have removed any of the uh, contaminants that are stuck inside. The very, very minute pitting um, that's happening on that lobe. Um, um, all of those fine scratches and things like that would have had uh, any contaminants drawn out of them. So I guess in summary, it's more over, uh, you know, the, the two methods both have different outcomes. It's horses for courses. It depends on how you want to refinish that surface. If it's going to be prepared for paint, then, then dry ice clean does make for a very good preparation of a surface, but it's unrivaled to something that's actually going to pit the surface, which will, you know, will etch that surface a little bit better, which will allow the paint and, and the solvents that you're using to really immerse themselves into the, into the surface whatever you're painting. Dry ice cleaning will remove those contaminants and then that way you're not going to have anything on there. It'll be as clean as it can be. And if, if there's no rust or anything that needs to be removed, no oxidization of any shape, form that needs to be removed off the surface then dry ice cleaning will suffice for paint preparation as well. Moreover obviously there is always going to be different situations where you're dealing with different sort of uh, you know levels of contamination on that surface. We like to use you know both whenever they're uh, viable that way we can you know ensure that we're getting the most you know original finish as possible but you know when we have to take that step and, and we do need to entirely refinish something then then we'll use the sandblasting when necessary. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video that's kind of a bit of a wrap up as to the differences between the two. If anybody has any questions as to you know what the key differences are or want to know a little bit more specific as to how we do things or whatever it may be, just drop a comment or send us a message and we'll get back to you and we'll let you know what that is. So thanks again for tuning in uh, to another video. If you have subscribed, just make sure that you have your bell icon on so anytime that we have any new bits and pieces to come out, um, you'll be the first to see them. Thanks again for joining us for this video.